<clears throat> what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to the of course, semifinals in the Valor Pokemon League. And yeah, going up against Quebec and this Tid. And uh, what else can I say? Uh, I lost this guys in uh, before playoff. Uh, I didn't necessarily do all too well against him, and uh, I didn't look forward to facing him again. Now he changed up his team somewhat, but it's largely the same. I really struggle versus his Whimsicott and Genesecticon with Gliscor and Circuitry, and they are of course to be accounted for here. Uh, the Pokemon that really, really wrapped up last time was Cloyster, so I'm glad not to see that Pokemon here. But on that, it looks to be roughly the same team. And the Genesect here is without an item, which is somewhat to nerf it, and I thought it worked throughout the season, but Genesects have been extremely effective even with that nerf, so it's very clear that this is one of the best Pokemon in the concept, and uh, yeah, very tough to prep for, uh, large move pool, really good special attack, just does really well overall. Uh, my team here is as follows, Infernape, a special variant with uh, Vacuum Wave, Fire Blast, Stealth Rocks, and close combat. Gyarados would fly MC. Uh, this Pokemon didn't necessarily get to do anything last time he fought off, and this mainly due to his Whimsicott actually nature power with Thunderbolt, which was pranks boosted. So yeah, it one shot at my <laughs> Gyarados, so very, very ugly. Uh, Among Us here is an Assault Vest variant with, um, no, a Black Slide version with uh, Toxic and Stopping Tantrum. The idea with Stopping Tantrum is if you use Muck against me, uh, I should be able to to it kill it and at least lure it to that with Stopping Tantrum. Uh, so that's what I'm going to aim towards. Uh, Tabu Koku, standard variant, able to outspeed his fastest Pokemon on the team. And uh, he's a very good Thunderbolt spammer. Uh, it also has the Fog if I'm forced to, uh, to use that I'm going to. Scissor is a standard Soul Stance variant with uh, Bullet Punch, U-Turn, and then Roost. And Cure and Black is an Assault Vest variant with uh, some mixed offensive investment. Able to just nuke anything in the community team. We do have a combination of Fusion Bolt, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and uh, Hidden Power Fire. So pretty standard. Um... What I see him leading off with is anything besides Gliscor, so I'm going to actually lead off myself with Infernape, and we're going to take the game from there. So without further ado, let's go into the match. So from the get-go here, my opponent's actually going to lead off with Gliscor, so that's not ideal. I feel Stealth Rock is definitely going to come off the field, but no matter what, my best play is somewhat down the line here to just uh, kind of accept my situation as... Uh, I have to switch out, I can't risk an earthquake or anything like that. So I'm gonna switch in Cure and Black, mainly because I do believe this will force it off fairly right and I don't risk the start of rock damage. Now he goes directly for Rock Tomb actually, uh, and while it doesn't do all too much damage towards me, it's at least it's a very good niche idea. So we're gonna force him out. I'm gonna go directly for an Ice Beam, which, you know, we did this play last time, and of course Cure and Black was hitting resistantly towards the Insect. Since I have Hidden Power Fire, I do kind of kick myself over this because it means that he can fully, freely U-turns and I'm going to allow him to as I'm going to switch in Cumberdale, which is my Mongus. Uh, shouldn't be able to do too much damage from the U-turn, but it still does roughly one third. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a nasty situation to be in as we see the end game uh, in Muck come in. Now Muck, like I said, there is not a big threat, but I don't want to spoil my potential surprise for him is going to send in a Volthard Majardos uh, as he goes for Taunt, fearing that I have the Spore, which I don't because of the type of Koku, the Electric Train really does kind of nerf that towards force me. Uh, so I'm going to directly here go for an attack as I go for Waterfall. Uh, I do have access to Earthquake, so it definitely was a risky play for my opponent as uh, I have to switch out no matter what it goes for. And Mongus is my easiest switching, even though this Pokemon could pack Psychic. Thunderbolt doesn't do necessarily anything, and it feels really good it doesn't do that. Uh, I can, for myself, go directly for a Stomp and Tantrum. He goes for an Electric Train. Um, now, this works in his favor. Like I said here, it is an anti-response towards the winner not I have, uh, <laughs> have Spore here, so I I'm, I'm glad I survived this. I am, sadly and unfortunately, missing out on that KO as he's going to switch in the end game. I do believe I keep going for the Stomp and Tantrum. Uh, now here's the thing though, um, I should be able to do it kill Muck here. Uh, the reason I say that is because it gets double the power if I go for an Toxic here, making stop the time for him double the damage. And I really want to get that because that means that we don't go into activate his figure berry. So while this play may look strange, trust me when I say this, I was 
<laughs> looking for this moment to just annihilate Moxtra off the bat, and we do get that mechanic to knock him out. So we get a good lead way here, though we still not in a safe zone. Genesec is still very much alive, and I really can't do anything towards that. Uh, so I'm gonna send Athena Max here. I really just wanted to get my freeze set up, but the earthquake really, really does a number on me, and I really don't want to give in too much momentum into Genesect as well. I do get my free. Uh, set up here to uh, go for possible mega evolution. I really just want to get a stronger lead way here, so I decided actually to just force switch out. Uh, probably shouldn't have forced myself into go to Gyarados. I think Infer Inferno would have probably been a better play, as I don't want to risk the possible Thunderbolt from the Genesect. So I go to Galatron, knowing that that's my best play, as my opponent goes for a U turn. And um, yeah, this was tough, because this does a very, very good chunk of the damage. Uh, now he's gonna bring in Skilless, and um, well, I don't believe Whimsicott is a threat here, so I'm actually gonna go directly for uh, an Ice Beam, as uh, he was probably fearing that and went for a sack play here on the circuitry, so definitely the right play to make, as uh, he's gonna fold that off with the Genesect, and I'm still in that part, like, Cure and Black probably won't do anything as necessary for this well as as overall, so I actually stayed in versus U-turn. I did not predict myself to survive that, so lucky for me, I should say, because I do get the lead here to go ahead and part fire. And that said, though, heading off any other move, he would have been knocking me out, so I should probably actually just go for an ice beam, getting the damage, but in the big grand scheme of things, this won't necessarily matter that much. Uh, now, I'll spare my Cure and Black for a sack play and bring it in Among Us. Uh, basically, what I do want to do with Among Us is bring it in and out just to get Regenerator back because I do kind of lock myself in the knockoff place against Tamak. I do, uh, of course, lose a lot of damage. I kind of want to recover myself as best as I can, and I think I'm being able to do just so as I force myself out, go into Odysseus, which unfortunately because he brings the Gliscor, which was definitely not the ideal switch in. So I'm going to, of course, go to Voldhard here and just go directly for the Intimidate. I was going to say, but don't have that. I have Moxie. I was supposed to have Intimidate, so it's really unfortunate as he gets the Stealth Rocks up. Now, I do decide here to not set up. I go directly for a Waterfall uh, just to get the damage, actually. And, uh, well, it almost KOs Lafonso. Now, he has his two plays here. Either he roosts up or he switches out. I really thought it was going to switch out, so I went directly for Fly MC as this was a situation for me of just getting as much damage as possible. I missed out on this opportunity the last time I fought, so I was really happy that this time uh, Jardos got to do the massive amount of damage that I was aiming towards in our last game, and we are going to be able to knock out Whimsy Card, which did, well, quite frankly, a lot of damage towards our team. So, Jaros might not be necessary for the battle, but the short as hell got the momentum very much needed to find the lead way in this game. Now he's gonna bring Stranded the Trachyon, and um, I'm gonna just um, like force to switch myself into Galvatron, sack play that, forcing in the Trachyon, and uh, well from there actually bring in my sister and go for the bullet punch. Uh, I do believe that's my strongest play. I predict this Trachyon to actually be Scarfed. So my biggest play here is actually just to try to force him out as best as I can. As he's gonna yet again bring in the Genesec, which just keeps on giving this Pokemon. I definitely don't believe I do well well at all against. It really is forcing my Pokemon out, and it's very very good defensively towards me. And I really bullet punch as you guys will see won't do anything at all, and it just it it's not pretty. It's really not pretty. Now, I can't stay in here and take a flamethrower. I do believe going for a flamethrower would be his best play. So I'm going into this use just to try to soak that. And I say try because, quite frankly, if I name while it's resisted, it still does a lot of damage. So <laughs> it's it's not good. As he's going to go into his Lafonso, I'm actually just going to go directly for a Fire Blast. Uh, would you connect that? We're going to knock out the, Gl the Glisco. So we're, we're looking steady. But the life form is taking a toll on me, and I really can't do too much against that. As it brings in Drakion again, and I am forced to actually just sack something, and the things I'm gonna sack is Cumberdale. Um, I think it's done enough, and quite frankly, uh, it was either him or uh, Jardos, and I kinda wanna save Jardos just for the hell of it, because I definitely believe that my bullet punching monster that is Scissor can be able to. Uh, do more damage to this Pokemon because I do kind of want to bring it down as he stays in 
uh, letting me get the damage on it, which make it guarantee KO with the Infernape with the Vacuum Wave. So we do survive at 1 HP. Like I said here, uh, pre as previously against Whimsy God, this didn't necessarily matter in grand scheme of things. However, it is, like I said, kind of unfortunate because it, it, it looks kind of nasty. Uh, but it brings in the Genesect and we'll be able to just, I was going to say wrap it up, but he has extreme speed and just going to go for that. As uh, I can very, very easily go to my Tapu Koku and he is forced to actually sack play his Genesect, which will mean that Inferno will be able eventually to, after that, of course, wrap the game up with the uh, Vacuum Wave. Now, I will say this though, because we do knock out the Genesect, like I said there that I'm going to bring in Jarlos just to kind of get the kills on it. I do believe it was a very, very worthy Pokemon this game. I was really happy to see it all pays off. As he will connect to Stone Edge, it is what it is. And um, the reason I just wanted Jarlos to get the kill was because, well, I didn't get to do anything last time versus Ted, and I really, really, really wanted him to get his revenge, but no, his Terrakion is super loyal, super champ, and just knocks it out, so... We're going to win this game 1-0 instead of a 2-0, and quite frankly, I think it's super, super, super fairly uh, that we actually snag the KO this time, and or and the win, as you'd say, and actually going to play finals in Develop Pokemon League, which is tremendous. I've been waiting so long to do just that. So, I do believe this goes without saying. Like, versus Tether, my... My... Oh, how do you say it? His best threat versus me was revealed in a previous game, and I do believe that was something that damaged him versus me this time. Had we not fought before, I do believe Tid would have knocked me out the same easy way he did last time with Electric Train and you know Nature Power with the Pranks and Boos. It would have worked gloriously here as it did last time, because I was definitely weak to that as it was previously. The thing was here, I was much, much more conservative with bringing Tabu Gogo. I brought it like the last few turns of the game. And that's what I'm kind of trying to aim and say that, yeah, I win the game, but I win because I already knew his best threat versus me. And I definitely believe he was trying the same thing, but with different Pokemon. And I think it works semi well. But I had better strats and new ideas versus him to kind of anti respond his previous last, last match, matchup versus me. And it was more rewarding to me than it was for him. And quite frankly, I, I really mean this. Like, had I not tried to go out of my way to kind of uh, lure Ted and, you know, um, de strategize his ideas, I would have, he would have punished me badly. He's one of those battlers that can easily sweep me 6 0 because he's just that smart. Um, <laughs> like I said, I had the main strat against me used against me previously, which meant that I had all the time and preparations I needed to kind of counter that and survive that and I think that's why I win the game because I knew his best place um, and I know it sounds cocky but I really mean that in all respect to Ted because I believe like I said had we not fought before he would have beaten me just as easily as me the first time it is that simple and I'm really really glad I got to fought him again and try to showcase that I'm not that easily beaten I mean he beat me too oh sure but that game should have ended 6-0 in his favor because he was just outplaying me so hard. This time I think it was on even ground and I got an early momentum and that kind of stuck. Um, so with that said, I really just want to thank everyone for of course watching. For Tid, very very good luck in the uh, Bronze game versus Hannah. Uh, I really really are looking forward to see that game transpire because I do believe, like I said, Hannah had a great season. Tid really really did step up his game the last few weeks and it's been an incredible force. So really looking forward to see how his season's ending as we're gonna face off Joey and um, the Los Angeles Nintendo Kings and 